your career in Milwaukee started off strong. You were doing your thing. Yeah. Bucks gave you a, a four-year, forty-four million dollar extension. I want to say like twenty thirteen, and then things kind of started to take a turn a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to, what were you going through, kind of mentally and emotionally at that point? Um, yeah, man, it was cold as shit. No, I'm playing. <laughs> it was it was just a lot, man. I think I think if you kind of like if I backtrack a little bit, like I said. I started playing ball when I was 15. I played one year at AAU, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I fell in love with the basketball culture. I was adopted by it. I was tall, you know, I was fast. You know, I had these attributes that were attractive and fit into the game. But um, a lot of it I didn't resonate with my soul, honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm a natural entrepreneur. I grew up, I had my own line, line service when I was a kid. You know, I was selling snacks out the garage. I was the candy lady, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You come over here and get what you need. I was selling that shit in school. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I was just used to kind of just making money and being my own boss. Like, that's kind of just how I was. I got taller, <laughs> I started playing ball, started getting good at this shit, and next thing you know, you know what I'm saying, I'm in the league, and just having to like conform to like someone else's standards uh, all the time was uh, just an issue. You know what I'm saying? I like living life on my terms mm -hmm. because I can and thrive. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't really need to do that. You know what I'm saying? Even though I love playing basketball, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, just, I just know I can get it. So being talked to certain kind of ways, kind of that bought and sold atmosphere, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I ain't really like that shit for real, man. You know, like, have a conversation with me. <laughs> Don't let me see some shit on the news about where I'm going and, you know, I got a family, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I got kids, you know what I'm saying? We all got, what, what we gonna do? You know what I'm saying? I got to uproot tomorrow and they got to figure it out on, by the phone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, it was so much, I had, I had two children, um, you know, and it was go to the hospital and see your kid and come back be here before, you know what I'm saying? It was shit like that, yeah. like, it was just no, I didn't feel like a human. I felt more like a product in a lot of ways, like, you know, and very disposable. So, you know, I just, I just wanted to add a little more value to my presence, I felt, you know, and it weighed on my mental health. You know, I was, like I said, it, it was very cold. <laughs> I needed sun, <laughs> you know, seasonal depression is a real thing, you know. Um, going into my early 20s, I feel like that's when I had a lot of, uh, I started dealing with anxiety. That's when I started smoking weed. I didn't even smoke weed till my second year in the league, mm -hmm. after the lockout. You know, we was locked out the first year, uh, after my first year. And then um, during the lockout was when I picked up, you know what I'm saying? Niggas just stressed out. <laughs> and I was with other NBA, so you know how it go. <laughs> we was all in that bitch blazing. And um, it was helping, you know? When my most consistent year smoking weed and playing was when I averaged, you know, three blocks and a double-double. You know what I'm saying? And I was uh, like micro dosing, you know, I hit a couple times, yeah. go to sleep, you know what I'm saying? But I was being penalized for that shit on the other end, you know? And uh, it was like, I know what's good for me. You know, I know how to, you know, and I know these alternatives that y'all are offering me are going to put me in a weaker position in the long term. Like right now I might be cool, might help with the craving, duh, duh, but these, these pills and shit, like, they have residual effects, you know what I'm saying, on my mental that y'all don't got to deal with. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't care, you know what I'm saying? I got to deal with that shit. My family got to deal with that shit, you know what I'm saying? It's just um, in different ways. So, you know, I was smoking weed consistently, averaging uh, three blocks and a double-double, and then summertime comes, and they're like, you got to go to rehab for 90 days. Does it make you mad or frustrated at all to know that kind of you were, you were penalized and stigmatized for something that's now free for everybody to do? I just knew it was going to happen, man. I just, I just, I'm like, this is, this is the future, you know. And that was my argument with the doctors and all that. It's, it's just, I'm, I'm happy to see it, man. I don't, I don't want nobody to go through the shit I went yeah. through. Like, smoke, be free. I know what it does. I know you're gonna be able to eat and sleep, and you know what I'm saying, make you a better, you know, function better. So, Christian Lakner. Oh, <laughs> he was the first one I like really like had a conversation with about just mental uh -huh. and. Because I mean, we went somewhere, and it was the first time that I seen a man just get booed. Just as mm -hmm. soon as he came, he you know, came in like the last seven minutes, and man, it was killing him. Mm -hmm. Just like, and I'd be like, yo, what'd you do? Mm -hmm. And he was like, this is how it's been my whole career. He said, this is the only time I get cheered is when whatever home team I'm playing for, mm -hmm. other than that, I get booed like this everywhere I go. He said, ever since it was college when I stepped on a dude's chest. And then he said, and plus I'm playing for Duke. Mm. We're the most hated team. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yo, how do you deal with this? He mm -hmm. says, 
my therapist and Mary Jane. I was like, oh, your wife and I me, mean, I'm clueless. Your wife, Mary Jane? <laughs> He's like, nah, Mary Jane. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, you can smoke? And he was like, no, yeah. He said, everywhere I go. Yeah. He said, man, he said, imagine going into a game, knowing you about to get booed by the whole arena. He said, we're up 20. They supposed to leave. They stay just to boo me. And I said, I just, I felt so bad because I felt like you can hear them boos like, damn. Ooh -wee. Like they hate this man. And he's just a man I had to mentally deal with. I had to mentally escape. Yeah. You know, I just, I would like to think I'm a, a little part of the push. <laughs> <laughs> you know, make all that shit worth it.